that opened up a door that I wanted to close, then I didn't know who to go to to close it. My parents, they'd send me to a rabbi. A rabbi couldn't help. Rabbi, I'm hearing voices. There's a demon inside. You know what he'd do? He'd send me to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist, when you were in sugar like that, they didn't know what to do. So they would give you electric shock treatment. And then you'd really be sugar. And I'm a Jew, so I'm not gonna go to a, a priest or something. Death looked better to me than life. I was raised in an Orthodox Jewish home. I went to the synagogue uh, faithfully until I was bar mitzvah, and I couldn't wait to get out of the synagogue, but I did go on the high holidays with my parents. If you said to me, did I believe in God? I would have said, I guess as a Jew, I'm supposed to say yes, but I don't know. And I quickly learned that I could be happy if I made a million dollars. I had a degree from a major uh, university in the United States. I had a job with the largest stock brokerage firm in the world at that time. So I did something I'm not proud of. I left my job, I left my wife, I left my daughter, and I got involved in what was called a New Age meditation course. I was told that they would teach me how to know things that were not programmed in my brain. And then I thought, well, if I could know this uh, information from the invisible world, then I could know what stocks are gonna go up. Then I could make a million dollars in the market. Then I could be happy. So I took this course and I actually didn't think it would work. They told me how to mentally slow down my brain waves through mental exercise. And then when I'm in a passive, almost a hypnotic state, I could invite an imaginary friend into my head. And this imaginary friend would give me information that had been never programmed into my brain. So I went along with it. I'll tell you between you and me why I went along with it. They said they'd give me my money back if it didn't work. So I figured I'd, I'd do everything they said. I knew it wasn't going to work, but it did. And I knew things that had not been programmed in my mind. And I thought, oh, I'm now going to be happy. And the power actually started growing. And then uh, I got involved in something called astro projection. That's where your spirit leaves your body. But then I found out once your spirit leaves your body, every night that you go to sleep, your spirit goes for a spirit walk. What if it, my spirit left my body and didn't make it back in time? <laughs> I'd be buried alive. And I have to tell you, I was so fearful that I couldn't even sleep. And I was convinced that what was inside of me was evil. It was actually a demon. I have tasted the power of the dark side, of the demonic world. And contrary to popular opinion, it's not fake. There are genuine supernatural things that are miraculous. Death looked better to me than life. Life was too hard. I, I wasn't looking for God. I, I wasn't looking for religion. I was just looking to go back to the way I was. I'd opened up a door that I wanted to close and I didn't know how to close it and I didn't know who to go to to close it. For instance, my parents would give their life for me, but they couldn't help me. They'd send me to a rabbi. A rabbi couldn't help get, rabbi, I'm hearing voices. There's a demon inside. You know what he'd do? He'd send me to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist, when you were in sugar like that, they didn't know what to do. So they would give you electric shock treatment, and then you'd really be sugar. And I'm a Jew, so I'm not gonna go to a, a priest or something. I knew there was nowhere I could go. I was told there was a greater power than that devil that was pulling me under, that demon inside of me, and that power was the name of Jesus. Did I believe in him? No. But did I have nowhere else to go? I had nowhere else to go. And at that time, I'd been given a Bible by these 
Christian businessmen. We Jews have nothing to do with the New Testament. We Jews have nothing to do with the church. You know, when you're sinking in the middle of the ocean, you don't care who throws you a rope. In desperation, I prayed a two-word prayer. Jesus, help. I really didn't want to wake up. Life was too difficult. Well, I did wake up the next morning, and I couldn't believe what happened. That demonic thing that was inside of me, it was gone, totally gone, and replaced with the greatest peace and love a human could have. I could not be afraid and fearful if you gave me a million dollars because this love conquered all of my fear. It was a love that I had never, never experienced, I'd never felt before. And I returned to my wife and daughter and my marriage was restored. And I can tell you that Joy and I have celebrated our 53rd wedding anniversary. My dad was angry with me the entire time that I became a believer, all of those years. You can't be two things. You can't be Jewish and a believer in Jesus. He wanted nothing to do with Christians, and he was really ashamed that his son was a public believer in the Messiah. My mother observed how my marriage was restored, how I became a good husband, a good father, a good provider. And she said, you know, I don't believe in this Yeshua, but Yeshua made my son a mensch. That means a good human being. I discussed with her why I believed in Yeshua. And one day she said a prayer to know the Messiah. And then when my mom died, my father asked the most important question he could ask me. He said, Sid, will you go to the synagogue for almost a year with me and say Kaddish for your mother? And just as I was going to say, no, Dad, I don't have time, I heard the voice of God, and I felt God said, yes, tell him yes. And you know, I went with my father every day to the minion, and I said the Kaddish, and I put on the tefillin, one day, my father said, because I was being such a good son in his mind, do you still believe in him? And I said, yes, Dad, I do. I believe the blood of Yeshua washes away my mistakes, and I am clean. I opened up my Tanakh, and I read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah to him. It says we Jewish people reject him, but he won't die for his own sins. He'll die for our sins and by his stripes, by the blood that'll flow from him, we will be healed. My dad said, stop. You're reading from a Christian Bible. You're talking about that man. And I thought to myself, isn't that amazing? I am reading from a Jewish Bible and he thinks I'm talking about Yeshua. I tell you, God is wonderful. He restored my life. He restored my family. My entire mishpocha came to know the Messiah. I owe everything to Yeshua, and I'm one grateful Jewish man.